All praises to the most high. So tonight's topic is a continuation of last night's class, Leadership for Dummies, part two. Leadership for Dummies, part two. So now, give me the book of Titus, chapter one, verse five. I just want to recap a little bit. Uh, Titus, chapter one, verse five. As a leader, as you young upcoming leaders, you must be able to know how to examine yourself and be real with yourself and identify those things that are lacking so you can grow in this truth. Give me Titus 1 verse 5. The book of Titus chapter 1 verse 5. Come on. For this cause lift I thee in Crete, mm -hmm. that, thou shouldest, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting. That you must set in order the things that are wanting, the things that are lacking in your spirit. Meaning what? You must develop. You must grow in this truth. You have to develop. What is that part again? That, you, that thou must what? That thou should have set in order the things that are wanting. That you should have set in order the things that are wanting. Come on. And ordain elders in every city as I had appointed, as I had appointed thee. So now it says you must set in order the things that are wanting. It is important to set in order the things that are wanting. For you to do that, you need to identify what those things are in you. You know that, you know what, I'm lacking here, I'm lacking here, I'm lacking here. So guess what? Guess what? Somebody that is about growth and development, guess what they will do? They will now go to the, go to seek counsel on how do I develop a skill in this? What must I do in order for me to grow in this truth? Give me that in First Peter's, okay? First Peter's 2 verse 1. First Peter's chapter 2 verse 1. Watch this. First book of Peter chapter 2 verse 1. Come on. Wherefore, laying aside all malice mm -hmm. and all guile Come and on. hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. Now, you see, the Apostle Peter is teaching this is the key to success and growth in this truth right here. He says these are the first things we must do. We must lay aside all of these evil demonic demons that we worship. Malice, you understand? Guile, bitterness, hypocrisies, envies, and all evil speaking. The first, before you can grow, these are the things that you must identify. That you know what? These are the things that are, are actually hindering my growth in this truth. They are hindering my progress. They are messing up with my development. Okay, come on. Verse 2, read. Verse 2. As newborn babes mm -hmm. desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. So now you see where growth comes from? Go growth comes from where? When you desire the sincere milk of the word, the basics. Because the basics, that's the good foundation right there for you to grow in this truth. But before you can grow, the reason why you, if you, you, when you examine yourself and you start to see that, you know what? I'm not growing in this truth. This is the reason why you're not growing. Read verse one again. Come on. Titus. No, no. First no. Peter, Peter two. chapter Come two on, and one. Focus. Stay with me. Where for? Listen, pay attention. Don't mess me up now. Verse one again. Come on. First Peter, First chapter Peter two and two, one. Verse one. Come on. Where for? Laying aside all malice. First Peter, chapter two, verse one. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. So now these are, the, these are the things, these are some of the things that we must do in order for us to grow in this truth so that you can identify the things that are lacking. Because where you are lacking, your job is to sit down and say, you know what? These are the things that I'm lacking in. You must take stock of the things that you know you are struggling with so you can grow. And when you do your self-examination, these are the things that you're going to find and more. Once you find these, when you find these things, guess what? You begin to examine them. When you examine them, you begin to repent from them. Then the Lord will give you the spirit of growth. Come on, verse 2. Come on. Verse 2. As newborn babes, Desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. 
He says, as newborn babes, because newborn, you are born again in this truth. He says, you, the first thing you must desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow. Growth. Very important. Growth is very important. Understand that thing. Watch this. Now, one of the, one of the, the, the list of things that as, as an upcoming leader, as you are being taught in this truth, you are being groomed to become a leader. These are the, these are some of the things that we're going to have to go into. Watch this. One of the, the characteristics that you must have is that you must have good social skills. You know, some brothers don't have good social skills. You understand? Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Sarah 20 verse 16. You must have good social skills. Okay. Sarah, Sarah 20 verse 16. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 20 verse 16. The fool saith, I have no friends. Mm -hmm. I have no thank for all my good deeds. And they that eat my bread speak evil of me. Read that again, verse 16. Ecclesiastes chapter 20 verse 16. Go ahead. The fool saith, I have no friends. Mm -hmm. I have no thank for all my good deeds. And they that eat my bread speak evil of me. So now this is what a fool says in their mind. He says, I have no friends. Because how do you sit there and say, I have no friends, but you're not making friends. Because in the truth, we meet friends in the truth. You understand? That's you, in the truth, that's where you meet friends. You meet friends in the truth. You understand? But a fool will say in the truth, knowing what the scriptures say, because this is the civil law now. You understand? And that's like a blot in the nation of Israel because they don't know how to apply this thing. It says, a fool saith, I have no friends. I have no thank for all my good deeds. Because whenever you do something good, you are always expecting something in return. It's never just out of the goodness of your heart, you're just doing it. That's why you're always complaining. It says, I have no thank for all my good deeds. Because why? You don't understand the import, what it means to be a, to be a friend. In order for you to have a good friend, you must first be, you must learn how to be a friend, a good friend yourself. So for you to do, for you to have those qualities of being a good friend in the truth, guess what you must do? You need to examine yourself and see the mental hangups you have that are hindering you from becoming a good friend so you can have good friends in the truth. Read that again. Verse 16. Ecclesiastes 20 verse 16. Go ahead. The fool saith, I have no friends. Mm -hmm. I have no thank for all my good deeds. Go ahead. And they that eat my bread speak evil of me. They that eat my bread, they speak evil of me. We want to we wanna deal with this in a second. But what I want to show you here is, it says, this is what a fool says in his mind. I have no friends. Because you don't make friends because you don't make a good friend. According to the scriptures. Watch this. Give me Jude verse 19. Okay, Jude. Verse 19. Your call has the been placed on hold. Please wait. The Apostle Jude, he dealt with this thing. Okay. Read that. Jude verse 19. The book of Jude verse 19. Mm -hmm. These be they who separate themselves. Sensual, having not the spirit. So now a fool that says I have no friends is because you separate yourself. You separate yourself. When we come together as the, as, as, as the congregation or as brothers, you always that see that Negro right there just by himself. He's separating himself. Why? Because you don't understand what this is about. So you are, the Sirach 20 verse 16 applies to you. Read it again. The book of Jude verse 19. Mm -hmm. These be they who separate themselves. Sensual, having not the spirit. Sensual, having not the spirit. Watch this. Give me Sirach 19 verse 6. Sirach 19 verse 6. Because another thing also is that because you separate yourself, you understand? Because you don't know how to be a friend. You understand? According to the scriptures, guess what? Watch this. This is some of the bad qualities you have that other people don't want you around them. Why? Because you are not a good friend. You are evil. You always like to cause strife and confusion. You are emotional. You understand temper tantrums? Yes. Watch this. Give me that. Sarah 19 verse 6. Come on. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 19, verse 6. Read. He that can rule his tongue shall live without strife. Mm -hmm. And he that hateth babbling shall have less evil. You see what the Lord is saying? It says, if you can rule your tongue, you're gonna have, you're gonna live with, you're gonna have life that is with, without strife. Because wherever there's strife, give me that in James 3. James 3, 16, real quick. James. James chapter 3, verse 16. Mm -hmm. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. You see what James is saying? Where envying and strife is, there's confusion in every evil work. The Satan is always in the midst. Go back. Sarah chapter 19, verse 6 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 19, verse 6. Read. He that can rule his tongue shall live without strife. Mm -hmm. And he that hateth babbling shall have less evil. He that hateth babbling. Babbling, meaning what? You're just speaking things that you ought not. You understand? It says, and he that hateth babbling shall have, shall have less evil. Because you're not going to speak the things that you ought not. You speak, uh, you, you speak with timing. You open your mouth in wisdom. You understand? Come on. Come on. Verse, verse seven. seven. Rehearse not unto another that which is told unto thee, and thou mm -hmm. shalt fear never the worse. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, don't rehearse to somebody else that which you was told unto you. Meaning what? Revealing secrets and stuff like that? No, no, no. Don't be doing that. The only time when you reveal a secret is when somebody comes and tells you, I did something evil. And that the evil is going to get everybody into trouble. No, no, no. You don't keep quiet about stuff like that. Read that again, verse 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 19, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Rehearse not unto another that which is told unto thee, and thou shalt not and thou shalt fear never the worse. Read. Whether it be to friend or foe, mm -hmm. talk not of other men's lives. Come on. And if thou canst not, and if thou canst without offense, reveal not, reveal them not. So the Lord is saying, it says, whether it be to a friend or foe, meaning you are told something, and now you For he heard in. and observed thee. Wait, And wait, when time wait, cometh, wait. He will hate me. Hold on. Now, you see something going on now. Okay, hold on a second. Brother Bezalel, I need you to read because there's a delay here and he's messing me up. Okay. Brother hey guy, jump off, come back in. Yes, sir. Sarah chapter 19, verse 8 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 19, verse 8. Read. Whether, whether it be to friend or foe, talk not of other men's lives. Mm -hmm. And if thou, if, thou canest, if thou canest without offense, reveal them not. So now the Lord is saying, he says, because he's, he's continuing verse 7. He says, don't rehearse unto another that which is told unto thee. Whether it be to a friend or foe, talk not of other men's lives. Meaning what? Stop gossiping. Because today, men gossip more than men. That's what you are seeing today. You're not disgraceful. You understand? Go ahead. Verse 9. Verse 9. For he heard and observed thee. And when time cometh, he will hate thee. You see what? He, because he heard and observed thee. He heard that you were like to run your mouth and gossip. You understand? It says when time comes, when the time comes, he says he's going to hate your guts. Now you've just created an enemy. If you could have just kept your mouth shut. You understand? Go ahead. If thou hast heard a word, let it die with thee and be bold. It will not pass thee. The Lord is saying, if you heard a word, meaning a rumor, he says, let it die with you. You understand? And be bold. It will not pass thee. Meaning what? It's not going to break you. Because some people cannot hold, cannot hold a secret. They can't. They have no discretion. That's what we read in Proverbs 1. They have no discretion. You understand? Once they hear it, they, it, 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 they, it itches them. So that's the reason why you lack poor social skills. Because why? Because you don't, know, you don't know how to exercise discretion. You understand? You have no discretion. Discretion and knowledge and wisdom. 
You don't have none of those things because you can't hold no knowledge. Give me that in Sarah 21. Okay, Sarah 21 verse 14. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 21 verse 14. Come on. The inner parts of a fool are like a broken vessel. Mm -hmm. And he will not hold knowledge as long as he liveth. He's not going to hold no knowledge. The inner part is talking about his mind. He's not going to hold no knowledge. The Lord is telling you he's not going to best you. Go back. Sarah 19, verse 10 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 19, verse 10. Right. If thou hast said, let it die with thee, and be mm -hmm. bold, best thee. He says, and be bold, it will not best thee. So guess what? A fool, the inner parts of a fool is like they're like a broken vessel because a fool is not going to hold no knowledge. You understand? He will not be able to hold something that is dear. He cannot keep a secret. He does not have the spirit of discretion on him. You understand? But he will ignore this commandment right here when he says, if thou hast heard a word, let it die with thee and be bold, it will not best thee. You see that part right there? A fool will not be able to do that because his spirit is not built up enough to do that thing. Go ahead. Verse 11. A fool travailed with a word as mm -hmm. a woman in the of a child. You see what he's saying? A fool travailed with, with, travailed with a word. Meaning what? It's itching you. It's bothering you that you cannot tell nobody this thing. You understand? It's bothering you. So it says you, you're acting like a woman that is what? That is in labor. Because she cannot keep quiet because of the pain. So likewise, the secret, you understand, that you are holding for your brother, whatever the case may be, guess what? It says it's going to pain you so much so that you have to best it out. You understand? And that's the reason why you don't have, nobody trusts you. You understand? The reason why you don't have good social skills, you have poor social skills. Because whenever you are in the midst, there's always problems. Okay, come on. As, as an arrow that sticketh in a man's thigh, so is a word within a fool's belly. Mm, that's some heavy stuff right there. You see, an arrow that sticketh in a man's thigh, guess what? It's painful. That's a painful situation right there, an arrow. But it's also, so is a word within a fool's belly. Meaning what? You, 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 umamko pose, you can't help yourself. You understand? You cannot help yourself. Now watch this. Give me Sirach chapter 14, verse 5. Sirach 14, verse 5. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 14, verse 5. Mm -hmm. He that is evil to himself, to whom will he be good? Mm -hmm. He shall not take pleasure in, in his goods. Because he's covetous. You understand? But, if you, the, the, but the key is, if you are evil to yourself, you will not be able to, you, you will not be good to nobody. You will not be good to nobody. You understand? So, and whenever money is involved, you will always see that Negro pop up all the time without fail. You understand? Because they have, have, they have a very intimate relationship with money. You understand? They have a very intimate relationship with money. He, they borrow you something and you tell them, okay, I'm going to bring it on such a day. Before the due date, he'll be nagging you about that thing. Why? Because why? He's a covetous. You understand? He's covetous and he's not a good brother. So now, and as you young men, as you're coming into this truth, you have to learn to avoid this type of characteristics in you. You have to patch them out of your spirit. You understand? Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Sirach 6 verse 14. Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 6, verse 14. Because it says, if you are evil to yourself, you will not be able to be good to nobody. So for you to be a friend, to, be, to have friends, we, we talk about in the truth now, you have to be able to be, know how to be a friend yourself. You understand? You must know how to be good to yourself. You must know how to respect yourself when it comes to this Bible. Watch this. Sarah 6, verse 14. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 14. Read. A, fa a faithful friend is a strong defense. Mm -hmm. And he 
that is, and he that had found such a one had found a treasure. You see what the Lord is saying? A faithful friend, meaning this friend is loyalty. Is loyal, is faithful, and is loyal. It says, is a strong defense. And he that hath found such an one hath found a treasure. Now watch this. Go back to Sarah 14 verse 5 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 14, verse 5. Come on. He, he that is evil to himself, to whom will he be good? He shall not mm -hmm. take pleasure in his goods. He will not take pleasure in his goods because he's got this, he's a niggard at, at his table. But he's evil to himself. He's not going to be good for, to nobody. So now, go back to, go back to where he was at now. Sirach 6, verse 14 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 14. Read. A faithful friend, a faithful friend is a strong defense. And he that is, is a one such an one is a strong defense. Is a strong defense. A faithful friend is a strong defense. If you find such a one, he says, the Lord says you have found a treasure. Now watch this. Let's deal with what is the definition of friendship in the scriptures. Give me that in John 15, verse 13. Let's read that. John chapter 15, verse 13. This is Christ, our Lord and Savior. He taught us what it means, what friendship actually is. Read that. The book of John, chapter 15, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Greater love had no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friend. That a man laid down his life for his friends. Watch this one. Explain to you what friendship is. Go ahead. Ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Do you see what friendship is? Friendship is what the Lord says. You, we are his friends if, if we do that which is commanded of us. The keeping of the commandments in the faith of Christ. So we become friends to Christ. So likewise, when you keep the commandments with your neighbor, you become, your, you become a friend to your neighbor because you are keeping the commandments. They are keeping the commandments. Both of you are in the same mind, same spirit. You are knit together as one sheet. You understand? You understand? So that's a true friendship according to the scriptures, keeping of God's laws. Go ahead. Henceforth, I call you not, not servants, for the servant knoweth not mm -hmm. what his Lord doeth. But I, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known. You see what he's saying? You. The things that he've heard of his father, he made them known unto us. He, what did he do? He taught us the commandments. He taught us how we must conduct ourselves as it is written. So now we become friends with the Lord. So likewise, you want to be friends with your brother? Guess what? It must be based, your friendship must be based on what is written in this Bible. You understand? Because, because it's, based, it's based on what is written in the scriptures, guess what you're going to do? You're going to understand the same things. You'll be on one accord. You understand? You will be on one accord. You will understand one another. Watch this. Give me Sirach 6 verse 15. Let's go back there. Sirach 6 verse 15. You know what? The Read verse 14. Read verse 14 again for me. Read verse 14. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 14. Mm -hmm. A faithful friend is a strong defense, and he that had found such an one had found a treasure. So how would you know that this, this friend is faithful? How would you know that? You understand? How are you going to know that this friend is faithful? Jump up to verse 7. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 7. Mm -hmm. If thou wouldst get a friend, prove him first, and be not hasty to credit him. So for you to be able to prove that, to know that this, this brother right here is a faithful, is a strong defense, you understand? You need to have proved this brother. You need to have been, been through some stuff. You understand? And your friendship must be tested by this Bible. Your friendship must be tested by this Bible. You understand? That's how you know he's a faithful friend and he's a strong. That's how you're going to know he's a strong defense. 
You understand? Because when things go bad, he will pick you up. So friendship is actually in the truth. In the world, it's just people you know, call acquaintances, if you will, but it's not friends. You understand? Jump down to verse 15 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Nothing doth contravail a faithful friend, and his excellency is invaluable. You see what the Lord is saying to us? Nothing that countervail a faithful friend. Countervail meaning what? Nothing can go against a faithful friend. You understand? It says, and his excellency is invaluable. Because you prove this brother. You understand? You prove the brother. You know that this brother is a faithful friend. Not faithful to you. No, no. Faithful to what is written in this book. And you must be faithful to what's written in this book. And the two of you, guess what you will, you will have? You will have friendship one with another because what binds your friendship is the laws of God, the scriptures. You understand? That's what that means right there. Go ahead. A faithful friend is the medicine of life. Mm -hmm. And they that fear the Lord shall find him. That's the key right there. So if you want to find that faithful friend, you must fear the Lord. How do you fear the Lord? You keep his laws. According to Psalms 111 and 10, you keep the commandments of the Most High. When you keep God's commandments, guess what? The Lord will give you faithful friends. Those friends is what? The brothers and sisters around you because they keep the commandments and guess what? They believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and the promises that he has made to our forefathers. You understand? Read on, verse 17. Whosoever feareth the Lord shall, di shall direct his friendship aright. Mm -hmm. For as he is so shall his neighbor be also. You see what he's saying? If you fear the Lord, you're going to direct your friendship aright. Because you fear the Lord, you understand? You're going to find that faithful friend. So it says, for as he is, so shall his neighbor be also. Because the way you are, he also going to be like that. Watch this. Give me that Sirach 37 verse 12. Sirach 37 verse 12. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 37, verse 12. Mm -hmm. But be continually with a godly man whom thou knowest to keep the commandments, to keep the commandments of the Lord, whose mind is according to thy mind, and with, will sorrow with thee if thou and will sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry. So now he's saying you must be continually with a godly man. That faithful friend, because you know he keeps the commandments of the Most High God, and his mind is according to your mind, and will sorrow with thee if anything goes wrong. You understand? When that friendship gets tested. Because guess what? It's tested through trials and tribulation. Brothers come into the truth together. One is going through trial, the other one is not. When the other one goes through trials, he's, he, he falls under pressure, he leaves. That's not a friend. You understand? He is the devil the Bible speaks of. You must let him alone. You understand? That's not a friend right there. He's not a loyal friend because he does not what? He does not respect the nation of Israel enough those that keep the laws to remain and fight together. He doesn't believe that. You understand? So those are the qualities that you must have. You understand? Watch this. Go back to Sirach 6 verse 14 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 14. Mm -hmm. A faithful friend is a strong defense, and he that had found such an one had found a treasure. He had found a treasure, because that treasure, the same, the, 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 the treasure is like the scriptures. The scripture, this is a treasure. So the same way the scriptures is a treasure, that friend also will be a treasure. Why? Because he mirrors this Bible. He's about this. You understand? Give me Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. Watch this. The book of Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. Mm -hmm. A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born 
or adversary? Adversity. A adversity. He says, a friend loveth at all times. That's a faithful friend. Whether things go bad or not, that friend will love at all times. He is faithful. And a brother is born for adversity. You see that thing right there? This friend right there, that's your brother in the truth. He says they are born for adversity. Because when trial comes, you know that brother will be there. You understand? Likewise, the congregation, the way we deal with one another, when one of our brothers and or sisters, you know, they cannot pay rent, they cannot buy food and so forth. Guess what? We must be the ones that we must help. We must not come up with excuses. We must help the brother. We must help the sister. You understand? Watch this. Now, give me Sarah 12 verse 8. We're coming back here to Proverbs. Give me Sarah 12 verse 8 and 9. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 9. Verse 8, 8 and 9. We're going to read 8 and 9. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 8. Read. A, a friend cannot be known in prosperity, and an enemy cannot be hidden in adversity. You see what the Lord is saying right there? A friend cannot be known in prosperity, because when everything is good, everything is good. But when things go wrong, then you're going to know who your friends are. You understand? When things go wrong, you're going to know whether who's loyal and who is not. That's what he's saying. A friend cannot be known in prosperity because at that point, everybody's your friend. But he says, and an enemy cannot be hidden in adversity because they are rejoicing that things are going wrong with you. They will rejoice. Next verse. Come on. In the prosperity of a man, Enemies will be grieved, mm -hmm. but in his adversity, even a friend will depart. Because that was not a friend at all. He was never a friend from the beginning. You understand? He was never a friend from the beginning. Read it again, verse 9. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 9. In the prosperity of a man, enemies will be grieved, but in his adversity, even a friend will depart. So now... When you are prospering, it says enemies will, are going to be grieved. You understand? Enemies are going to be grieved. Understand that. But in his adversity, even a friend will depart because he was never a friend to begin with. You understand? Watch the next verse. is going to explain that. Read verse 10. Never trust thine enemy. Mm -hmm. For like as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. Because that friend that departed, he was never a friend. He was, a, he was your enemy. He's your brother, but he was an enemy to you. You understand? Because he's not about this. As long as he's not about this, that's your enemy right there. You understand? That's an enemy. Okay? Watch this. Give me Proverbs 27 verse 17. Come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Iron sharpeneth iron. Really? So, a man, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. So now he says, iron sharpeneth iron. There's nothing wrong where you have to show each other the scriptures and all of that. But one thing that you need to understand, you come into this truth together, you cannot go to your brother that you came in the truth with to seek counsel from. That's dumb as hell. Black people do that stuff. You know, you don't do that. You go to those that came before you in this truth. You see, black people don't understand that type of a thing. That's all in structure. You understand? Nation building. They don't understand that. You cannot go to your friend that you went into the, you came to the truth with for counsel. You understand? Because the things he knows, you know them also. But it doesn't mean that you cannot you know, um, show the scriptures. So, you know, like I was studying this, I was studying this, you know, you can rehash. You know, I was reading that project chapter, where chapter are you at? Well, there's nothing wrong with it. But when it comes to understanding of scriptures, that's not, that's not going to work because they also, they don't understand just as you. You understand? So we need to understand that thing. That's a true friend right there. Okay, read that again, verse 17. 
the book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 17. Read. Iron sharpeneth iron. So mm -hmm. a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. You see that thing? A man will sharpen the countenance of his friend. Why? How is he going to sharpen the countenance of his friend? Because why? You're going to rehearse the scriptures. You understand? You will rehearse the scriptures. That's how you sharpen the countenance of your friend. Meaning fix your face. Give me Sarah 9 verse 10. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Forsake not an old friend, for the new is not comparable to him. Mm -hmm. A new friend is as new wine. When it is old, thou shalt drink it with pleasure. So meaning what? When it is old, meaning you have to, have to, go, you have to go through trials with this brother or that brother. You have to go through trials. You understand? That's how you prove that friend. It says when it is old, because now you've gone through stuff in the truth. We're not talking about the world stuff. No, in the truth. You understand? It says, it says what? It says when it is old, thou shalt drink it with pleasure. You understand? Old wine. Old wine. You see, old wine is pleasurable. It's good. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book. Let me give you an example of friendship. Give me 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 1. This is King David and Jonathan, Saul's son. Watch this. 1 Samuel chapter 18. Because friendship goes hand in hand with those social skills that you must have. You understand? But when you separate yourself, guess what? You're not going to be a friend. You're not going to develop good social skills. Neither will you be a friend to nobody. You understand? And you'll always be dealing with things on your own by yourself afflicting yourself with your own counsel. Okay, First Samuel chapter 18, verse 1. Because guess what? When you do that, you're not going to understand the scripture that we read in Sirach 6 when it says, let's go back there, let's read that again. Sirach 6 and verse 16. Sirach 6, verse 16, read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 16. Go ahead. A faithful friend is the medicine of life, and mm. they that fear the Lord shall find him. So now you're not going to understand that medicine right there. That medicine right there goes into what? Give me that in Ecclesiastes. We coming back to First Samuel. Give me Ecclesiastes, okay? Ecclesiastes. Watch this, chapter three. No, Ecclesiastes chapter. Ecclesiastes chapter four and verse nine. Ecclesiastes four and nine. Come on. Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 9. Read. Two are better than one because mm -hmm. they have a good reward for their labor. You see what the Lord is saying? Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. You are laboring together, helping one another. That's how we must work together in the nation, in the body, in the congregation. We must work together like a world oil machine. You understand? Read. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. Mm -hmm. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he had not another to help him up. So that's where that medicine comes in. You understand? That's where that medicine thing comes in. You're going to see the purpose of that medication. Because guess what? Iron sharpeneth iron. The brother will help you up. You understand? You're going through something. Listen, I've, gone, I've been through that thing before. Don't worry, you'll overcome it. This is what I did. That's how you sharpen the countenance of your friend. Okay? Watch this now. 1 Samuel 18, verse 1. First book of Samuel, chapter 18, verse 1. And it came to pass, and it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that Saul of that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. So now, you know, you see the, the homosexual, the LGBT, the alphabet community, they use this to justify the lust they have one with another when it comes to men having sex with men. I had somebody, I think, 
one of the I think is what this guy is some gay guy on the news. That's his name, right? That guy, he used something like this, he used this scripture to justify, you know, you understand, putting his rod in another, another man's behind. Yes, that's what he was just, he was using this scripture. Read again. And T.D. Jakes also, he used this scripture to push the same garbage. You understand? Read that again, verse 1. First book of Samuel, chapter 18, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Jonathan loved David as his own soul. Watch this. It says they were knit. You understand? It says that Jonathan's soul was knit with David's soul. Watch this. Give me the book of Judges. Okay? Give me Judges chapter 20 verse 8. Judges chapter 20 and verse 8. You know what? Start at verse 1. Read 1, then we're going to jump to 8, then 11. Read verse 1. The book of Judges, chapter 20, verse 1. Come on. Then all the children of Israel went out, and the congregation was gathered together as one man. You see that From thing? That the, hold on. The congregation was gathered together as one man. One man. You see that part right there, meaning what? There was unity of the brethren. They were in unity, one spirit, one mind. You understand? The congregation was what? Read that part again. The book of Judges, chapter 20, verse 1. Then all the children of Israel went out, and the congregation was gathered together as one man. Read. From Tan, even to Pesheba, with the land of Gilead, and to, and to the Lord in, Miz, Miz, in Mizpah. 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 Mispa. Jump down to verse 8 now. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. And all the people arose as one man, saying. As what? Hold on. It as says one all man. the people. All the people. All the people, which is all the congregation in verse 1, they arose as what? They arose as one man. They arose as one man. They were in the same spirit. Go ahead. Saying. We will not any of us go to his tent. Neither will we any of us turn into his house. Jump down to verse 11. Verse 11. So all the men of Israel were gathered against the city, knit together as one man. You see that thing? They were knit together as one man. This is an example of what we're reading in 1 Samuel 8 with Jonathan and David. You understand? They were knit together as one man. So how do you read, just read that and the homosexuality pops in your head? David kept the commandments. So did Jonathan. So that would, be, that would mean that Leviticus 20 is out of the window. Leviticus 18 is out of the window. You understand? Go back to 1 Samuel 18 verse 1 again. First book of Samuel. Chapter 18, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit together with the soul of David. Mm -hmm. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan loved David as his own soul. Watch this. Remember, we understand what it means when it says they were knit. You understand? Their souls was knit. They were, what? They were knit together as one man. Like we read in Judges. You understand? Watch this. It says he loved him as his own soul. Give me James 2 verse 8. The book of James. Chapter 2 verse 8. Read. If, if ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. That's what David and Jonathan was doing. They did well. Because guess what? Jonathan loved David as his own soul because he was applying the royal law. Royalty. You see what royalty means? When you love your neighbor as yourself, when you love your neighbor as your own soul. Understand that? That's royalty right there. 
And that's what the nations are afraid of. They are afraid of that thing. Watch this. Give me Romans 12. Romans 12 verse 10. The Apostle Paul explained the same thing. Romans 12 verse 10. Read that. The book of Romans chapter 12 verse 10. Mm -hmm. Be kindly, be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love mm -hmm. in honor preferring one another. You see that thing? Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring preferring one another what is wrong with that there's nothing wrong with that but in the christian church when they read first samuel 18 then they they think what because their mind is perverse they think about homosexual there's nothing there's not nothing anywhere close to that what we just read in first samuel the reason why i'm bringing this out is that these are one of the these are some of the qualities that you must have you must in order for you to be a friend you must yourself, you must be a friend as well. You must be a friend first. That means you must have good social skills. You must know how to apply the civil law. Be civil to your brother. You must get rid of those, the spirit of malice, envy, and anger, and evil speaking like we read in First Peter 1 and 1. You understand? You must be able to get rid of that stuff. Because as a people... Yes, we have, re we, have, we, have, we have fringes and a bottle of blue. We've got beers. We keep the Sabbath, but we're still moving with the spirit of hatred. You understand? Watch this. Um, keep, go back to 1 Samuel, okay, 18. 1 Samuel 18, read verse 3 now. First book of Samuel, chapter 18. Verse three. Verse three. Come on. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. You see, you see, because he loved, they made a covenant, meaning what they made a pact, a friendship agreement. You understand? Because he loved him as his own soul. Go ahead. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it to David and his garments even to his sword and to his bow and to his, to his girdle. So now when they read this, they say, you see, they took their clothes off. No, it says, and Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it to David and his garments, even to his sword and to his bow and to his girdle. So he gave, he took, it's like you have a favorite clothing item. You give it to your friend whom you love. That's what, that's what Jonathan is doing here with David. You understand? I'll give an example. Give me the book of 2 Kings, okay? Give me 2 Kings chapter 2 real quick. This is Elijah and Elisha, okay? 2 Kings chapter 2, read verse 9. You know what? Read verse 12. Read verse 12. The book of 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 12. Come on. And Elisha saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold on his own clothes and rent them into, in two pieces. So now Elisha, Elijah now has been taken up by a well by a chariot, right? It says Elisha took his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. Watch this. Go ahead. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. You see what he did? He took Elijah, and because remember, Elijah used to wear a fur. You understand? He used to wear a huge jacket and a fur with a fur on it and a belt and a cape. So he took those clothes. You understand? That's another example right here that we just read in 1 Samuel. So go back there. 1 Samuel chapter 18. Okay, verse 4. First book of Samuel, chapter 18, verse 4. Read. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and mm -hmm. gave it to David and his garments, even to his sword and to his bow and to his girdle. 
So now, what I want to show you here is that Jonathan is, is you see, we, when you, Jonathan is doing all of this, by the way, Jonathan is the one that's doing all of this. It says, read verse one again. I'm going to show you. Jonathan was a good friend to David. You understand? Jonathan was a good friend to David. So there's a lot. Jonathan had really good qualities in him. Read that. Verse one again. First book of Samuel, chapter 18, verse one. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. So Jonathan was setting the right example for David. That's what he was doing. He says, Jonathan loved him. He loved David as his own soul. Now read verse 3 again. Verse 3. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. Because he loved him as his own soul. So Jonathan is setting the right example of what a friendship is. Go ahead. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and mm -hmm. gave it to David and his garments, even to his sword and to his bow and his girdle. Now watch this. Give me Sarah 25 and 1. Ecclesiasticus 25 verse 1. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 25 verse 1. Read. In three things was I beautified and stood up beautifully both before God and man. The unity of brethren. The what? The love of the unity of brethren. The unity of brethren. This is one of the things that they beautify the Mosai. The Mosai is telling us how to beautify him. That's what Jonathan was doing. You understand? When he loved David as his own soul, he was beautifying the Mosai God. He was knit together. With, he was knit. His soul was knit together with David's. You understand? So they had unity. There was unity among them. The love of neighbors. They, that's why it says he loved him as his own soul. So they beautified the Lord. You understand? Come on. The love of neighbors. Mm -hmm. A man and a wife that agreed together. Now that goes into what? Na marriage now. You understand? But what I want to show you here is a man and a wife that agreed together. Remember, marriage is a mystery. Between what? Christ and the church. So that's what David and so, uh, David and Jonathan was doing. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Psalms 133 verse 1. The book of Psalms. Chapter 133 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Behold. How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. You see that thing? He still likes the same thing. How good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. That's what John, Jonathan was setting the right example for David. He did that thing. So the same spirit that Jonathan had is the same spirit we ought to have today. So you young men coming up, guess what? Because young men, you are filled with youthful lusts. And those youthful lusts include anger, envy, hatred, jealousy, and so forth. Those things, you will not be a good friend if you are hovering those things. You understand? You have hatred against your brother. You despise your neighbor. You will not be a good friend. You understand? You'll always have, you'll get, guess what? Read, read this. Give me Sarah 324. This is what will always be in your mind all the time, all the day. Every day, every day. Watch this. Sarah 324. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 24. Mm -hmm. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion. And an evil suspicion has overthrown their judgment. Because you have an evil suspicion against your neighbor, that's going to overthrow your judgment. You'll continue hovering those, those spirits. Anger, envy, hatred, jealousy, deceit. You understand? So... Because you are deceived by your own wicked mind, you will have an evil suspicion against your brother. You understand? Hating your brother without a cause. But if you want to be like Jonathan, guess what you will do? You will get rid of those things so you can grow in this truth. You understand? So those social skills, that's the, those, those good social skills, those are good habits to have. 
because those are going to teach you how to be a good brother. You understand? Then it's going to give you a good name because as part of leadership, you must have a good name. If you are being groomed to become a leader, you must have a good name. And that good name, you, you'll get it when you have, you need to develop a pattern of good works. Those good works are going to be based upon what? You following counsel and instruction to the T, not adding your own spices to it. You understand? Watch this. Um, give me, um, give me the book of Sirach now. Give me Sirach chapter 6 verse 14. Let's go back there. Sirach 6 verse 14. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 14. Mm -hmm. A faithful friend is a strong defense. And Read. he that has found such an one hath found a treasure. So now that treasure, because when you find a treasure, guess what you do? You, you cherish it. You look after it. You value. That's why it says it's invaluable. You can't even put a price on it. That's how you must, that's how we must be one for another, one to another. You understand? And before you can know how to do that, you must first cleanse yourself of all filthiness. You understand? Watch this. Another good character, you understand, of leader, of, of you becoming a leader is what? You must be faithful. You must be faithful. You understand? You must be faithful. Watch this. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Come on. First book of Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Read. Let a man so account of us as of the, min as of the ministers of Christ Mm -hmm. and stewards of the mysteries of God. So now the Apostle Paul says, men must look at us like this. That's what he's saying. He says, let a man so account of us. He must look at us like this. As of the ministers of Christ. Look at us as ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. So now he says, we must be stewards of the mysteries of God. Let's get the definition of the word steward. Okay. Steward. Let's see what it means. Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Okay, read that. The definition of steward. Mm -hmm. uh, definition, Teresa. Now, read, read definition five. Definition of steward. A person employed to manage another's property, especially a large house or estate. A large house or estate. That large house, that great house, that large house is the house of Israel. Now watch this. Read, uh, it says historical, it says British. Read the next bullet point. A person who's what? A person whose responsibility it is to take care of something. So that's a steward. The steward is somebody that's responsibility is to take care of something. Your job is to take care of yourself first and foremost. You understand? By you leading yourself because the first person you must lead is yourself. So it says, read that part again. A person who's what? A person whose responsibility it is to take care of something. That, some, that first something that you must take care of is yourself. Meaning what? That, that, that person that you must lead is yourself. The first person you must lead is yourself. Before you can lead somebody else, you must lead yourself. You understand? Okay. So now read that again. First Corinthians 4 verse 1 again. First book of Corinthians chapter 4 verse 1. Read. Let the men so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and mm -hmm. stewards of the mysteries of God. And stewards of the mysteries of God. We are all stewards up in here. So we are, but we are the stewards of the mysteries of God. The law, the, the gospel of the Most High. Next verse. Watch this. Verse 2. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. That's it right there. 
it is required, you understand, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Watch this. Let me see something real quick. Um, yes. Let me see. No, we don't want that one. Let's get the definition of the word stewardship. Okay. Mm. Let's get this definition. Let me share my screen real quick. Stewardship. Okay, read that. Stewardship. Definition of stewardship. Mm -hmm. Stewardship. The job of a supervising the job of supervising or taking care of something such as an organization or property. You see that thing? It says the job of supervising or taking care of something such as an organization or property. The nation of Israel, we are an organization. You understand? Of the Most High God. We are the government of the Lord. So your job is to take care of something, the organization. But before you can take care of this organized nation, guess what you need to take care of first? You must know how to lead yourselves. First and foremost, watch this. First Corinthians 4 verse 2 again. First book of Corinthians chapter 2, chapter 4 verse 2. Mm -hmm. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. That a man be found faithful. We must be found faithful in this truth. Watch this. Give me 2 Samuel 23 verse 3. Second Samuel, chapter 23 and verse 3. Because um, I know some of you, you want rank, but you can barely, you can barely follow the timetable that you put together yourself. You're not going to get that rank if you're still moving in that spirit. Second Samuel 23, verse 3. Watch this. Because you have to be realistic. You have to be realistic. You must ask yourself, okay, if I cannot manage my own timetable to organize my day what makes me think that i can be able to organize the nation of israel the people that are we cannot we outnumber the sand of the sea you gonna be able to manage that we must be realistic we must have sense in our spirit read that second samuel 23 verse 3 second book of samuel chapter 23 verse 3 mm -hmm. the god of israel said the rock of israel speak to me he that ruleth over me must be just. No, ruling no, in no, the no. Hold on. He that what? Read that right. He that ruleth over men mm -hmm. must be just. Come on. Ruling in the fear of God. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, he that ruleth. Because this is Christ speaking through David here. He's speaking through King David. He says, the God of Israel said, the law, the rock of Israel spake to me. He that ruleth over men must be just. Ruling in the fear of God. That's the same thing the Apostle Paul is saying here. You understand? You must be just. You must be found faithful. Watch this. Give me 2 Corinthians 4 verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 1. Second book of Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 1. Read. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. So now, now we have received this ministry, the ministry of Christ. You understand? The true gospel of Christ. It says, as we have received mercy, because Christ died so we can be in the new covenant. It says, we faint not, meaning you mustn't faint. Don't give up. Don't run when trouble comes. Go ahead. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Really? But, by man but by manifestation of the truth, commanding ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Now that's heavy right there. This is a huge responsibility. For you to become a steward, listen, I want to be a soldier. If you want to be a soldier, 
Listen, for you to be promoted to be a soldier, you must be doing the work of a soldier right now in order for you to get the promotion of a soldier. Your works will speak, your works will speak for themselves. You want to get the promotion, you want to get, you want to be a soldier, you must be doing the work of a soldier while you are a brother. So you can, you can get that promotion. I hope you men understand that. Read that again, verse 2. Second book of Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 2. Mm -hmm. But I have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commanding ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. So now, now that we come into this truth now, remember it says, if you rule over men, you must be just, meaning you must use the laws of the most high God to judge matters. Now it says, but, and also you must have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Remember it says, the steward must be found faithful. A student, a steward, excuse me, a steward, a steward is a leader. You understand? A steward is a leader, is a servant also. We are all servants, we are all stewards. But this is, guess what? There's rank. So it says, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. That means you must, have, you must be faithful, you must be honest, you must have a good report. Not walking in craftiness. You understand? No, you must not be walking in craftiness. You only just want the rank so that you can, you can be over brothers. No, you will not get that rank. You understand? Not walk, you, cannot, you can't walk in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully. You can't handle the word of God deceitfully. You say, but you do not. Because a lot of the times that some spirits are picked up, I've picked some, some brother's spirit, some brothers are not ready to be over anybody yet. Why? Because they have the spirit of jealousy. They have the spirit of hatred. You understand? They have the spirit of deceit, the spirit of lying. So you can't be over other brothers because if you have the spirit of jealousy, guess what you're going to do? You're not going to allow those, that brother to grow. You will not do it. You're not going to allow that brother to grow because you are jealous. You understand? Some brothers, yes, they have those qualities of, you know, you know, they can be raised up, but they have the spirit of disrespect. So guess what? Your speech, because some of you have, have spoken to you about that thing. You know, disrespectful to your parents and all that, thinking you can do it in here. No, you must change that. Because guess what? Them young men must, when you get to the level where you are raised up, the brothers that are looking up to you, they must also do what? They must ask, they must see good, those good qualities and say, you know what? I want to build myself also so I can also have those qualities. You understand? Read that again, verse 2. Come on, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 2. Uh, Brother Bezliel, you're on mute. Oh, apologies, apologies, sir. Okay, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 2. Let's read that. Second book of Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 2. Go ahead. But I, but I have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commanding ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. So he says, commending, commending ourselves to every man's conscience. Because how do you commend yourself to every man's conscience? Because the, your actions is going to register in their spirit that, you know, that's a good example to follow right there. That's why it says, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Watch this. Give me the book. Let's give you some examples. Give me Acts chapter 6 verse 1. Let's start there. The book of Acts chapter 6 verse 1. Let's see some, some of our forefathers, our forefathers that were walking honestly. You understand? And they had good report. These are the examples that we can draw from. Acts chapter 6 verse 1. We're going to read down. The book of Acts chapter 6 verse 1. Mm-hmm. And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the, of the Christians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected 
in the daily min ministration. Ministration means okay. administration. So there was a murmuring going on. You understand? The Grecians is those Israelites that grew up under Greek customs. They says they were murmuring against the Hebrews. He says because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. So now, because no, the widows must be taken care of. You understand? 60 and up. Go ahead, verse 2. Watch this. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, it is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. You see what they are saying? This is the, these are the apostles now. It says, I mean, we're not, gonna, we, we are, we are not going to deal with that. You understand? So they are going to set up rank and structure. That's what I'm trying to do here. You understand? That's why I want you brothers to study, to seek counsel so you can be built up. I need to know you. You understand? Why? Because we have to understand what type of spirit you are rolling in because when I need to delegate and say, I need you to handle this office. Right now, there's delegations happening in, the, in terms of the works that are being done in the body. But guess what? You need to be delegated in terms of leading men. For that to happen, I need to know you need to be close to me. You understand? Read that again, verse 2. The book of Acts, chapter 6, verse 2. Read. Then the 12 called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, mm -hmm. it, is, it is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. So because they were saying, listen, why should we be dealing with the, the saving of tables when we can be dealing with other matters? You understand? We need to, we, this business must be taken care of by somebody else. Next verse, watch this. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among yourselves, men no, of no. honest report. No, no, read that right. Come on, pay attention. The book of Acts, chapter 6, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven, men of honest report, full mm -hmm. of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. You see now what, you see what the apostles are saying? The apostles now are going to set up rank and structure. They are saying, wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. So now they need to look for those brothers that have a good report in Israel. They have a good name. They are, they are putting in works. You understand? They have a pattern of good works. They've built their name. They, they've built a good reputation for themselves in Israel. That's why now the, the, the apostles, the spirit jumped upon the apostles to seek out these seven men that had honest and good report that they can deal with the business of dealing with the widows. Okay, come on. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. So now let's read verse three. Watch this. Read verse three again. The book of Acts chapter six, verse three. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven, among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. So now these men, it says they had what? They had an honest report. Honest report. These men, they were found faithful. They were full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. These men were not dumb brothers. They were men of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Watch this. Give me, a, give me Sarah 29 verse 3. Ecclesiastes 29 verse 3. Okay. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 29, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Keep thy word and deal faithfully with him. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt always find the thing that is necessary for thee. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, keep thy word. One of the characteristics of you being groomed to become a leader, a steward, guess what? You must keep your word. You must be a man of your word. You understand? and deal faithfully with him. You must deal faithfully. You must have a good and honest report because you are keeping your word. It says, and thou shalt always find the thing that is necessary for thee. Meaning when you are in need, the Lord will have mercy upon you. The Lord will fulfill that need in you. Watch this. Go back to where he was at, Acts chapter six, verse three again. 
the book of Acts, chapter 6, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you, seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom mm -hmm. we may appoint over this business. Now watch this. Now give me 1 Corinthians 4, verse 1. Let's read that again. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 1. First book of Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 1. No, verse 2. Verse 2. Yeah, verse 2. First book of Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. That a man be found faithful. They found seven men of honest report. Because these men, they kept, the word, they kept their word. They were men of their word. They said they're going to do, they did it. Keep their word and deal faithfully. So they had a reputation in Israel. Even it got to the ears of the apostles. You understand? So now watch this. Give me the book of Galatians. Okay. Because in order for this to have happened. That means they had a good example before them. For them to have an honest and good report. And they were full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Because they were studying. They didn't act like they knew more than the apostles because that's the spirit that I really, really hate with my whole heart. I hate that spirit. Like, but in Esau's world, the Negro don't do that. But when you come in Israel, you think you can do that. I don't understand that. You understand? I don't get that spirit. Man, that spirit makes me sick to my stomach. Read that thing again. Let me calm down. Okay? Give me that. Give me that in Galatians 4 verse 1. Because these men, these seven men that have had honest report, these men right here, these men, they were following the good example that were being set by those that came before them. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Galatians 4 verse 1. Galatians 4 verse 1. The book of Galatians chapter 4 verse 1. Read. Now I say that the hair, the that air, the air, the air, come on. Now I say that the heir, as long as he, he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. So now that this goes into all, that goes into us as we've been raised up now in these last days. But on a carnal level, on a, on a, on a surface level, it says that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, because we are all heirs. But we're dealing with the young man coming in. is as though he be Lord of all. Not yet. Next verse. Watch this. But is under tutors and mm -hmm. governors until the time appointed of the father. Until his ministry, until the time of your ministry comes. It says until then you are under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. So guess what? These men of honest report... They were under tutors and governors, the apostles. You understand that? They were under tutors and governors. They were under the apostles. And the apostles, give me Philippians 3 verse 17. The apostles, they set the right example. You understand? Application of the laws of God. Read that. Philippians 3 verse 17. The book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have, as ye have us for an ensample. So now the apostle Paul is saying, listen, brethren, it says, be ye followers together of me and mark them, meaning what? You must, you must recognize those men that walk even as we do walk. You understand? And they have us as an example. They're using us as an example on how to walk. Why? Give me the book of 1 Corinthians 11 and 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1. Because when you look at this, the spirit of the apostle Paul, I mean, the apostle Paul, he was, he was, he was eloquent. He was well-educated. He learned from Gamaliel. You understand? And the spirit that he had, he had the spirit of humility because guess what? Watch this. Read that. 1 Corinthians 11 and 1. First book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Be ye followers of me, even as I am of Christ. You see what he's saying? Be followers of me. That's the same thing we read in Philippians. 
Be followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. First Peter 2, 21. Let's get there. First Peter 2, verse 21. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. First book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 21. Come on. For even hereunto we were ye called. Even, for even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, mm -hmm. leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. You see that thing? Christ left us an example. And the example that he left behind is the example that the apostles followed. And when the apostles came, they commanded us to follow them because they were followers of Christ. So that's the same thing today. Follow those that came before you because we follow Christ. Read on, verse 22. Who did not sin? Neither was guile found in his mouth. You see that thing? Who did no sin? Neither was guile. Bitterness that the apostle Peter was explaining in the same chapter in verse 1. That you must get rid, get rid of these things that you may grow. Because when you're under tutors and governors, guess what? You're going to grow because you are learning. You're not making yourself equal with those that came before you. Look at the apostle Paul, one of the mightiest apostles. He did not make himself equal with the apostle Peter, with those apostles that walked with Christ. He didn't do that. But the Negro today, they do this stuff like that. That's get darky. You see about the spirit of a darky? Daki, utaki, you cannot go wrong. He will always make sure that he disappoints all the time. But when you come in Israel, that spirit got to go. You understand? That spirit has to go. It's non-negotiable. Okay? Watch this. Go back to the book of Acts. Go back to Acts. Okay? You know what? Hmm. Go back to Galatians 4 and 1. Galatians 4 verse 2. Read verse 2. Galatians 4 verse 2. Watch this. Galatians chapter 4 verse 2. The book of Galatians chapter 4 verse 2. Read. But is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Now watch this. Let's get some history now. When we were going over the men's conference, we touched on this. Give me that in 2 Chronicles 24 verse 1. Second Chronicles 24 verse 1. You must be found faithful. And for you to be found faithful, it means you have a good report. You understand? Like we see here in the book of Acts, with those seven men that had honest and good report, and the apostles were able to anoint them to do that business. Watch this. Second Chronicles 24 verse 1. Second book of Chronicles chapter 24 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Joash was seven years was seven years old when he began to reign. And reign? He reigned for, and he reigned 40 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Zibia of Beersheba. So now Joash was seven years of seven years old. He is a seven year old. Okay. And he reigned, he ruled for 40 years in Jerusalem. Next verse. Watch this. And Joash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord all the days of jo all the Jehoiada, days of Jehoiada, Jehoiada the priest. The priest. Uh -huh. So Joash was seven years old. You coming in, you are a young man. Guess what? You need tutors and governors over you to guide you, to teach you. Watch this. Give me that in 2 Timothy 2. Give me 2 Timothy 2 verse 1. Watch this. Second book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong in the grace, meaning the grace that, the, that Christ gave unto us to, for us to get the kingdom. Go ahead. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, mm -hmm. the same commit thou to faithful men to who what? shall be able to teach the same commit thou to faithful men so it says the things that thou has heard meaning the things that you've been taught 
He says, commit the same to faithful men. Those things that you heard, you must commit those same things to faithful men. So he's letting you know, he's separating those unfaithful ones to the, from the faithful ones. So faithful brothers in this truth, guess what? You are going to be given, you are going to be given responsibilities because you are faithful. You understand? Go ahead. And the things, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. You see that thing? Who shall be able to teach others also? That's the key right there. Because each one teach one. So when you come in, you think you know something, you, you mean to tell me you're going to be able, who you're going to teach? Because you don't know anything. Because you don't want to learn anything because you know already. So you are not a faithful man that something can be committed to you. No. So when you come in, you must have that spirit of humility and the spirit of faith so that you can have that honest and good report so that things can be committed unto you so you can be able to be a benefit to others. You understand? Watch this. Now, let's go back to um, Second Chronicles 24 verse 2 now. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 24, verse 2. Mm -hmm. And Joash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord all the days of Jehoiada the priest. So the only reason why Joash was able to do that which was right in the sight of the Lord was because Jehoiada the priest was guiding him, was tutoring him, was guiding him, was counseling him on how to move. Likewise, for you brothers to continue you understand, to do that which is right, you have to seek counsel. You're going to be counseled on how to do things. You are going to be commanded on how to do things and what not to do and what to do. When you don't follow that counsel, guess what? You're, not gonna, you're no longer going to do that which is right in the sight of the Lord. Guess what? You see what we're reading here? It says, Joash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord all the days of Jehoiada the priest. That says a lot right there. But the Negro don't understand that. Utaki, he doesn't get this. You understand? Watch this. Read verse 15 now. Come on. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. But Jehoiada waxed old and was full of days when he died. And 130 years old was he when he died. So now Jehoiada passed on. Jehoiada the high priest. Watch this. Go ahead. And they buried him in the city of David among the kings because he had done good in Israel, both toward God and toward his house. So he was taking care of the things of the Most High God and taking care of his own house. Go ahead. Now after the, after the death of Jehoiada, came the princes of Judah and made obeisance to the king. Then the king hearkened unto them. So now you need to see something. There's a shift going on here. That means all this time, these wicked Negroes, they were just waiting like hyenas to do what? They were waiting for Jehoiada the priest to die so that they can what? So they can have influence over jo Joash. Joash. Because all this time they couldn't do it because Jehoiada the priest was there. He was a defense. You understand? He was that pillar. Jehoiada was a pillar so that he can stop wicked Negroes from messing things up. And guess what? Likewise, up in here, there's some brothers that they are just waiting for things to go wrong. You see that thing? That's not going to happen. The gates of hell will not prevail. Understand that thing. Okay? Read that thing again. I want this thing to marinate. So you upcoming, you young men, that you want to be leaders in the future, you need to take heed to this day. Read verse 16 again. No, verse 17. Second book, of, second book of Chronicles, chapter 24, verse 17. Read. Now after the death of Jehoiada came the princes of Judah and made obeisance to the king. Then the king hearkened unto them. So he listened to them, right? Watch this. Go ahead. Watch this. Hmm. Keep going. Read verse 18. Then I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bring something out. Come on. And they left the house of the Lord, God of their fathers, 
and served groves and arrows. And red came, came upon Jehoiada in Jerusalem. No, no. For this came the end. Or wait. And wrath came upon Judah. Remember, Jehoiada had died already. Okay, read verse 18 again. Read it correctly. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 24, verse 18. Mm -hmm. And they left the house of the Lord, God of their fathers, and served groves and idols. And wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem, for this their trespass. So now you notice here, where this is what they always wanted to do. So what Jehoiada was doing, Jehoiada was making sure that wicked Negroes do not come here and mess things up. So as soon as he died, to show he knew that Joash, he also was a simple Negro. Why? Because he only did well as long as Jehoiada, the priest, was guiding him. So now he did not continue in the things that he was taught. He went stage left immediately after uh, Jehoiada died. Watch this. Now, give me the book of Acts, okay? Give me Acts 20. Give me Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Watch this. The book of Acts chapter 20, verse 8. Verse 28, 28. The book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 28. Mm -hmm. Take ye therefore unto yourselves. Take ye therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he had purchased with his own blood. Now, that's a heavy responsibility right there. He says, you must take heed, meaning beware unto yourselves and unto all the flock. You must, must look after the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. The Holy Ghost is the one that made us overseers. You understand? To feed the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood, because Christ died. You understand? Watch this. Go ahead. Verse 29. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. That's exactly what happened in the book of Second Chronicles after Jehoiada died. Grievous wolves entered in among, among, among the king, you understand, not sparing the flock. They didn't care about Israel. Likewise, those same spirit back then, guess what? You better believe it. Those same spirits are back this day. You understand? Those same spirits, they are back. Okay? Keep going. Also, of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to mm -hmm. draw away disciples after them. You see what he's saying? He says, also of your own selves, meaning among the in, in the leadership now, he says, shall men arise. The same way, the same way, the same way, during the time of Moses and, jo and, and Aaron, there were, there were men that arose to draw away disciples after them. The same spirit back then is the same spirit they are back today. And I, I mentioned that last night. You understand? He says, shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them? You understand? The spirit of preeminence. So that's what Korah, Dathan, and Abiram did. They did that thing. That's the same thing that happened during the time when Joash was the king and Jehoiada the priest had died. Men arose to do what? To draw away disciples after them. And where did they lead them? They were worshipping groves of idols. Groves and idols. They led them into idolatry and they took them away from the commandments of the Most High. You understand? Because they didn't spare the flock. They didn't care about the nation of Israel. Read on. Verse 31. Therefore, Watch and remember that by the space of three years, I ceased not to warn everyone night and, day, night and day with tears. You see what he's saying? It says, therefore, because of, of everything that I just said, I'm summarizing now. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, it says, I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears. For three, the space of three years, 
he kept bringing this thing up over and over because he knew that was going to happen. So he wanted to make sure that those that are actually here to learn, they're going to take heed to watch for the flock. Go back to 2 Chronicles now, 24, verse 18. Start at, read 17 and 18 together. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 24, verse 17. Now, after the death of Jehoiada, came the princes of Judah and made mm -hmm. obeisance to the king. Then the king hearkened unto them, and they left the house of the Lord, they, they left the house of the Lord God of their fathers, and served groves and idols. And wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem, for this they are trespassed. Now, I want to show you something here. Give me the book of 2 Timothy 3, verse 14. Okay? 2 Timothy 3, verse 14. You know what? Give me Sarak 6 first, because we touched on this last night. Let's read it again. Sarak 6, verse 18. The, the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 18. Mm -hmm. My son... Gather instruction from the youth up. So, so shall thou find wisdom in thine old age. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, gather instruction from thy youth up. So shall thou find wisdom till thine old age. Now watch this. Sarah 25 verse 3. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25, verse 3. Mm -hmm. If thou hast gathered nothing in the youth, how canest thou find anything in the age? Because now I'm building this up for, for everyone so you can understand what Joash did, or rather what Joash did not do. Because Jehoiada the priest was the one that was guiding Joash that's why he was doing that which was right in the sight of the Lord, because Joash was counseling him. Now, watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes, okay? Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Ecclesiastes 4, verse 13. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 13. Better is a poor and wise child than old and foolish king who will no more be admonished. You see that thing? It says, better is a poor and a wise child than an old and foolish king who will no more be admonished. Because now, Joash, he was foolish now at this point. Because he didn't get an instruction from his youth up. He didn't do that. So the princes talk about what? The captains in the congregation. You understand? High-ranking men. They, they went to the king and the king did not gather anything in his youth from Jehoiada the priest. Watch this. So this is what Joash didn't do. Give me that in 2 Timothy 3 verse 14. Second book of Timothy. Chapter 3, verse 14. Come on. These things write I unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. No, no. Second, second Timothy. Second Timothy 3, verse 14. Oh, please. Second book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 14. Go ahead. But, I, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. You see what the Apostle Paul is teaching Timothy? He says, you must continue in those things which thou hast learned and has been assured of, meaning full proof of the ministry that he was taught, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Thou, thou hast learned them. You understand? Watch this. Go ahead. And that from a child, Thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation 
through faith which is in Christ Jesus. So now from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. So Joash, he didn't continue in the things that he learned. From a child, he didn't gather instructions from his youth. He didn't do that. That's why he was able to what? To be deceived by these Negroes right here. These dumb Negroes, they were able to deceive and seduce him. He was seduced. You understand? He wasn't steadfast in his understanding. Give me Sarak 5. He was not. Okay. Give me Sarak chapter 5 verse 10. He was not steadfast in his understanding. Meaning what? I'll put it like this. Let me make it simple. Okay. Let me bring it to let me bring it to today. So he didn't think, he didn't think, he he he, he didn't he realized that he wasn't as smart as he thought he was. Because when you are here, guess what? When you are here, the spirit of the Lord is here. When you decide to leave, the spirit of the Lord is not going to live with you. You're going to leave it here because you found it here. Because when you leave, you're going to think, no, I'm going to, I'm going to build this. You won't, be, you won't do it. You will not be able to. Why? Because you are not moving in the right spirit. You despise government and structure and order. Okay? So when you leave, you think you're going to be able to do what you was doing here. No, you will not be able to do it. You understand? So Joash, after Jehoiada left, he jo left Jehoiada left with that spirit because he wasn't really gathering instruction as he was supposed to, but he thought he was doing it. When push, push came to shove, he realized that, no, I can't do it. And guess what? He was deceived by these wicked hyenas that was just waiting. Okay. Read that. Sarak 5 is 10. The book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 5, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Be steadfast in thy understanding and let thy word be the same. You see that thing? Be steadfast. Disciplined in your understanding. Don't be moved in your understanding. He says, and let thy word be the same. Don't be double-tongued, double-minded. You understand? Watch this. Now go back to Second Chronicles now. Read chapter 24, verse 20 now. We're going to read 20 down. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 24, verse 20. Mm -hmm. And the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, the priest, which stood above the people and said unto them, Thus said God, Why transgress ye the commandments of the Lord, that ye cannot prosper? Because ye have so forsaken the Lord, he hath also forsaken you. Now that's heavy right there. Zechariah is the son of Jehoiada the priest. Now he's trying to get some sense into these men, the king, Joash, and these princes of Judah and Jerusalem. He's trying to get sense into them, say, listen, why are you transgressing God's commandments? You understand? Because what was the transgression? They served, they were now worshiping, they went into idolatry. You understand? They forsook the holy covenant. Now he's trying to what? He's trying to warn them to repent and return back to the Mosai. Watch this. Verse 21. And they conspired against him and stoned him with stones at the commandment of the king in the court of the house of the Lord. Now you cannot make this stuff up. They said they stoned Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, the priest, at the commandment of the king. So the king, he forgot what Jehoiada the priest did for him. He forgot that. Lack of loyalty. You see that thing right there? Loyalty. Faith and loyalty. Those two things. It's like that's kryptonite to the black man. You understand? They, he forgot what his father did for him. He forgot all of that stuff. Now they killed Zechariah. Watch this. Go ahead. Thus, Joash the king remembered not the kindness which Jehoiada his father had done to him, mm. but slew his son. Mm. And when he died, he said, the Lord look upon it and require it. Meaning when, jo when, jo when Zechariah died, he says, the Lord look upon it before he died. 
But what I want to show you is that he says, and does Joash the king remember not the kindness which Jehoiada his father had done to him? You're going to find in the future, those brothers that we looked after them, the sisters as well. Don't forget this. I'm jumping on the sisters as well now. They will forget all the kindness that we showed unto them. You understand? They're going to forget all of that when the devil jumps on them. They will forget all that. Lack of loyal, disloyal. You understand? But he forgot all the kindness that Jehoira, his father, meaning the high priest, showed unto him. And he killed his son in cold blood. Watch this. Give me that in 2 Timothy 3. 2 Timothy 3 verse 1. Now remember, this is during the time of Rome. Now we are reading here in Chronicles during the time of kings. Now watch this. This is thousands of years later. 2, 2 Timothy 3 verse 1. Watch this. Second book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1. Mm -hmm. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Peril in the last days, dangerous times shall come. That's what perilous mean. Go ahead. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. That's what Covetous. Joash did. Joash, he was a lover of his own self. What was the thing that he loved the most was himself. Because this is idolatry what we're reading. He lovers of their own selves idolatry. Exodus 20 verse 3. That's what this is going into. Go ahead. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, mm. disobedient to parents, unthankful, ungodly. Unholy. So, guess what? That's exactly what Joash did. Blasphemer, disobedient to parents, Jehoiada, the things that Jehoiada taught him, Unthankful, unholy. Remember, we just, just read what happened in the past. He says, in the last days, perilous times shall come. That means things are the worst things are going to happen in these last days than what, you, what we just read in 2 Chronicles. Betrayers. Betrayers. You're going to have a lot of those. The Lord is showing us here. You understand? Watch this. Now, let's go back because I'm bringing, coming here to show you the differences in those brothers that were anointed by the apostles versus this one. He was anointed by Jehoiada the priest, but when Jehoiada died, he didn't continue in the things which he learned. He cast, he cast those things behind his back. Watch this. Give me Sarah 21. Let's go back there. Sarah 21 verse 15. I'm going to show you an example that Sirach is saying right here. You understand? The example of what Joash did. So as young upcoming leaders that you are groomed to become, you cannot have those characteristics. If you have them, you must make sure that you meditate and get rid of them. Sirach 21 verse 15. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 21 verse 15. Come on. If a skillful man hear a, hear a wise word, he will commend it. He will what? Add, and he will commend it. He will commend because he's skillful. He's got wisdom. That's why he's got skill. He says he will commend a wise word. You understand? Come on. And what to it? And add unto it. He will add to it. He will continue in the things which he has heard. Like we read in 2 Timothy 2 verse 1 and 2. Yes. He will, he will add to it. He will continue in the things which he learned. Read. But as soon as one of no understanding heareth it, it displeaseth him. Mm. And, he, and he casted it behind his back. That's exactly what Joash did. That's exactly what Joash did. So now, guess what? It's the same thing today. Brothers, given counsel, you just cast it behind your back. You don't apply it. Because guess what? You are, you are a fool who has no understanding. You cast that word of wisdom behind your back because you don't, look, you don't look at the word of God as treasure. It's not treasure to you. You understand? So that's what the Lord is trying to show us here. Okay, he's trying to teach us here to be what? To be wise. So now let's go back to Acts chapter 6 verse 3. The book of Acts chapter 6 verse 3. The book of Acts, 
chapter 6, verse 3. Read. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom, whom we may appoint over this business. That's why I'm setting up that leadership table with those seven, those seven leaders of Israel. It's coming from here. It's not out of the own, out of my own imagination. No, it's what we're reading here. Seven men of honest report. That's what we're, that's what I'm looking for. You understand? Full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Watch this. Go ahead, verse four. But but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Come on. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man mm -hmm. full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. And Philip and, and Prochorus. And Prochorus. Prochorus. Prochorus, come on. Nicana. And, and Nicana. Mm -hmm. And Timon. And pa Pamine, Parmenas. Pani, and Parmenas. And Nicholas. A proselyte. And, and, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. Proselyte meaning what? He was raised up in the he was ra raised up in, in heathen customs. Now he was brought back into the law of Moses. That's what a proselyte is. He was it says Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, because he was pet, he was scattered, he was in he was in Greece. So these seven men right here, these are the seven men that had honest report full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Watch this. Next verse now. Come on. Whom they said before the apostles. Mm. And when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. The meaning they anointed them. You understand? They gave their, they blessed them so that they can be able to continue to do great and mighty work. You see, this is beautiful stuff right here. So when you, when you move in a crooked way, you think you're going to get blessings from leadership? No, you will not. Why? Because you are moving with the spirit of pride because you think you know something when you do not. But those brothers that humble themselves, they want to learn, they want to grow, guess what? They are going to get blessings. Why? Because we're gonna, I'm going to make sure that I, I allocate time to that brother and groom him because I see he's got the spirit to learn. So why? Because well, well, I'm looking at the nation. I'm not look, looking at how many precepts you can put. I don't care about that. I want to see you got a spirit to learn and you follow instruction because guess what? You're going to be given responsibility to deal with Israel. I want you to deal with these men over here. I don't have, I'm not, I can't be everywhere. Deal with that. So these are the type of things that are, these are, that's the type of characteristics you want to have. So what? Because you're not looking at, you're not thinking about you. You are thinking about Israel. You are thinking about your nation, not just about you. You understand? You can't be selfish. Okay, read on. And the word of God increased, and the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. You see that thing? And a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Because what they did they were able to cover more ground. You understand? And that's what I want to do. I want, I want to spread. I want us to spread out. But I cannot do that yet because some of you brothers, you're not ready. You understand? Come on. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Meaning he put in great works. Now watch this. Give me. You see that part when he says, read verse, mm, read verse 7 again. The book of Acts, chapter 6, verse 7. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. Mm -hmm. Read. And a, great and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Read. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. So now what we're reading here is what? Is when the apostles blessed these men, they were able to continue on and do great and mighty works. So 
the the thing that we're reading here is what we are trying to in what we're we're building on implementing here at soldiers of christ you understand we're implementing that so that's why i need you men you brothers to take this too seriously you understand don't play games in up in here you are not here to become a professional student you are here so you can learn so you can go out there and teach others also that's what we're doing right here you understand so the reason why I'm bringing this up is so that you can see how our, the, 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 how the, our forefathers moved. You understand? How they built the nation. They what? They, they, they had faith and they had, they had loyal brothers around them that were about the gospel of Christ. You understand? Watch this. Let's get to the next. Before we get that, you know what? Hmm. Give me the book of Titus. Give me Titus 2. Okay. Give me Titus 2, verse 2. I have to touch on this. Titus 2, verse 2. Read that. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 2. That the aged man be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity in patience so this is the requirement for the aged men because the aged men now their age they have they, they they are of great age in this truth watch this give me sarak 35 okay sarak 35 and verse no not sarak 35 watch this it's not part of my notes so i'm shooting from the hip on this um Sarak, yeah, uh, let me see. Sarak 25, I'm sorry. Sarak 25 is four. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25, verse four. Mm -hmm. Oh, how comely a thing is judgment for gray hairs and for ancient men to know counsel. You see that thing? How comely a thing is judgment for gray hairs. Judgment that's coming from age men. It says for ancient men to know counsel. So the, the, the age men that we read about in Titus 2, guess what? They will come with what? Judgment and counsel. Go ahead. Oh, how comely is the wisdom of old men and understanding and counsel to men of honor. Because this, this wisdom that is upon these, the old men, the aged men, guess what? It's, guess what? That thing is what? It's honor. That's an honorable thing. That means we, our nation is in order. You understand? Our nation is in order. Read. Much experience is the crown of old men. Mm -hmm. And the fear of God is their glory. You see that thing? Much experience is the crown of old men because they've been around. You understand? It says, and the fear of God is their glory because their glory comes because it takes wisdom to grow old. You understand? So the fear, the, the fear of the Lord is their glory because it showed that what it means to fear the Lord and the glory that comes with it. That's what we're reading right here. So today, that's why you see disrespectful young men, because they don't understand nothing about honor. They don't know anything about honor. They don't know nothing about that. Give me that in Leviticus 19, verse 32. That's why some of you, you don't like it when you have to do this. Leviticus 19, read it. Leviticus 19, verse 32. Some of you be complaining in your spirits about this thing. Okay, read that. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 22. 32, 32. Verse 32. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head and honor the face of the old man and fear thy God, I am the Lord. So that means when you don't rise up before the hoary head and he says that and honor the face of the old man, you don't fear the Lord. It says, and fear thy God, I am the Lord. This is heavy. 
this is kryptonite. This is like this is a foreign concept to Utagi. It's a foreign concept. Because we have not learned anything about honor. And honor is throughout the Bible, the Lord is trying to teach us. Says, I'm going to set them in order before your eyes. Now the Lord is wants to set us in order. Guess what? The black men, the Utaki, they don't want to what? They don't want to comply with what is written. The Lord will spill you out because you are a hindrance to his truth. Understand that? Watch this. Go back to Titus 2. Okay, Titus 2, verse 2 again. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 2. Mm -hmm. That the aged man be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. So now what we read in Sarah 25, verse 4 through 6, that's the characteristic of, of an aged man. You understand? Jump down to verse 6, because the aged man, their job is to teach these young men. Before you get that, give me 1 John 2, 14. Okay, 1 John, chapter 2, verse 14. First book of John, chapter 2, verse 14. Read. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abided in you, and ye have overcame the wicked one. You have overcome the wicked one. He says, I've written unto you, young men, young men, because ye are strong and the word of God abideth in you and you have overcome the wicked one. So what you want to understand is that you young men that are coming, you understand? When we are gone, you have to, con you have to, you have to continue this truth. You can't be stagnant. You have to be productive. You understand? You have to have the spirit of Nehemiah the spirit of Zerubbabel, the spirit of Joshua, the spirit of Moses. You understand? That type of spirit. Okay? The spirit of the apostles, the spirit of the seven elders that we're reading about in the book of Acts. Because they was productive. You understand? Watch this. Titus 2 verse 6. The book of Titus, chapter 2 verse 6. Read. Young men, likewise, exhort to be sober-minded. Exhort to be, hold on, wait. Exhort to be, so he says, young men, likewise. When he says likewise, meaning the same way the aged men walked, you must walk in their footsteps because they left a good example. Guess what? He says, young men, likewise, you must exhort to be sober-minded. You must, meaning your mind must be what? You must be, you must have a clear head. You must be level-headed. You must be objective. You understand? Read. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. Mm -hmm. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. You see what he's saying right there? That's beautiful right there. He says, in all things, you must show yourself a pattern of good works. That's what we read in Acts chapter 6 verse 3. In doctrine, meaning full of the Holy Ghost, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. The same requirement that we read about in Titus 2 verse 2 with the aged men. So for you to show yourself a pattern of good works, you, that means you must, that means a pattern comes about by application and discipline and dedication. You understand? You're not going to develop a pattern if you're not dedicated, if you're not disciplined. A pattern will not emerge. A pattern of good works will not emerge. It's not going to come out. That's why it's called a pattern. Okay, Titus 3. Titus chapter 3, verse 8. Because I really like this precept. Read that. The book of Titus chapter 3, verse 8. Mm -hmm. This is a faithful saying. And these things I will that thou affirm constantly. That thou that what? They, that thou affirm constantly. So that's why these things have to be reiterated to you over and over and over again, where we need to affirm them constantly, constantly must be beating at that nabi. Go ahead. The day which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. Mm. These things are good and profitable unto men. 
You see what the Lord is saying? It says that they which have believed in God might be careful, meaning you must take heed to maintain good works. Not only must you develop a pattern of good works, but you must maintain that pattern of good works. He says, these things are good and profitable unto men. So it's very important for you to develop a pattern of good works. And it's very easy to structure your day. I'm just using that as an example because that's a simple thing to manage. But if you cannot manage that, you have no business wanting any type of position right now. Right? But you can't manage your timetable. I mean, this thing comes from high school. High school, our teachers... I remember in high school, they used to, they used to listen. They would make, they would smack you because you're on a, you didn't have a timetable. They would do that. What were they instilling in us? Structure. Structure. That's what they were doing. Okay. Watch this. Now, another characteristic that you must have as, as a steward, as an upcoming young man in this truth, you must have this, you must have, you must be loyal. You must be loyal. Loyalty is very important. You understand? Because these loyal servants, look what happened to Judas. Okay? Is carried. Watch this. Give me, give me the book. Hmm. Give me the book of 2 Kings. Okay? 2 Kings, chapter 2, verse 1. Watch this. 2 Kings 2, verse 1. Second this is Elijah. Kings. This is Elijah and Elisha. Watch this. Read. Second book of Kings, chapter 2, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah unto heaven by a whirlwind that, El that El Elijah went with Elisha from, from Kilgal. So now Elisha went with Elijah because the Lord was going to take Elijah. Read verse 2 now. Come on. Verse 2, and Elijah said unto Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord had sent me, for the Lord had sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, as the Lord liveth, and as, the, as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. So now Elisha is saying, listen, I'm not going to leave your side. I want to learn. Because Elisha was a loyal brother. He was very loyal. He was, always, he was always around Elijah. What was he doing? Learning. He didn't want to let any words fall to the ground. He didn't want to do that. He did not want to do that thing. Jump down to verse 4 now. Verse 4. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tell ye, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. And he said, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. So wherever, wherever Elijah went, Elisha was right there. Read verse 6 now. Come on. The 6. And Elijah said unto him, Terry, I pray thee, hear, for the Lord had sent me to Jordan. And he said, as the, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they went on. Now and jump down to verse 9. On. So now, we, you see, now they came to Jordan. They were Jericho now at the Jordan. Read verse 9 now. Watch this. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee, before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Now that's a heavy, that's a heavy ask. Because how would he, how would he, how, what, 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 what did Elisha know or see for him to ask that? Because Elijah, he was about the business of the Mosai. You understand? He was about the father's business. And Elisha was like, you know what? I want that spirit right there. I want a double portion of that brother's spirit, Elijah. So that when he's gone, the Lord takes him. I can continue in the things which I have learned when I was around, when I was with him, when I was learning from him. Go ahead. And he said, thou hast asked, thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, mm. 
if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. You see what he's saying? If you see, if you see me when I'm taken away, then my spirit will jump on you. Go ahead. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah really? went up, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Mm, go ahead. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, El my father. Elisha did what? And Elisha saw it. Yeah, Elisha saw it. Remember what Elijah told him. He says, If you see me when I'm taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. Meaning Elisha needed to see that thing go down. You understand? Read verse 12 again. Second book of Kings, chapter 2, verse 12. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. Read. He, took up, he took up also the mantle of Elijah, that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. So what you want to notice about this thing was going on here is that had Elisha left Elijah, was he going to get a spirit of Elijah? No, he wasn't going to get it. Because remember when Elijah left, his Porsche his spirit also jumped on Elisha. But had Elisha left Elijah, he was not going to what? He was not going to receive the spirit of Elijah. Now, that's heavy right there. That's some heavy stuff right there. You have to sit down, really ponder upon that thing. You understand? Go ahead. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him. That's the, the, mantle, the, is, the mantle is the cape. Go ahead. And smote the waters and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he and when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. So what Elijah did, Elisha was doing it also. He was the new prophet now after Elijah had gone, because Elisha was a was a, was a faithful servant. He was a loyal brother, and the Lord saw that thing. Watch this. Give me the book of Exodus thirty-three verse ten. Watch this. Exodus 33. The book of Exodus, chapter 33, verse 10. Mm -hmm. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar standing at the tabernacle door. And all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door. Read. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. You see what Joshua was? Joshua was right there with Moses, because Joshua was a, was a loyal brother. He was a loyal brother and he had the spirit to learn. He didn't have the spirit of Dathan, Korah, and Abiram. You understand? He didn't have that spirit of those ashy black Negroes. He didn't have that spirit, but he had the spirit to learn. And the Lord was able to see that thing. Watch this. Give me Numbers 27 verse 15. Numbers 27 verse 15. The book of Numbers, chapter 27, verse 15. Mm -hmm. And Moses spake unto the Lord, saying, Let the Lord, the God of the spirit of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. Do what? Set a man over the congregation. Set a man over the congregation. Go ahead. Which may go out before them, and which may go in before them, and which may lead them out, and which may, which may bring, 
which may lead them out which may lead them out go ahead and which may bring them in come on that the, congr that the congregation of the lord be not as sheep which have no shepherd you see what because when there's no leader is like a congregation is like is they have a, they, they is like sheep without without a shepherd you understand which is leadership is necessary go ahead And, and the Lord said unto Moses, get thee up. No, no, verse 18. Verse 18. Verse 18, yes. And the Lord said unto Moses, take, the, take thee, Joshua, the son of Nun, a man, in whom the, a man in whom is the spirit, and lay thine hand upon him. So and now, set him see, before, hold on, wait, wait, wait. It says, and what, and lay thine hand upon him. That's the same thing we read in the book of Acts. When the apostles laid their hands upon those seven brothers that had honest and good report. Stephen was one of those brothers. So that's the same thing that Moses is doing here that is commanded by the Lord. Letting you know, the spirit of the Lord came down and commanded the apostles to do that thing. Go ahead. And set him before Eliezer, the priest and before all the congregation, and give him a charge in their sight. You see, why is he saying that? He says, give him a charge in their sight. Meaning, do it while the congregation is watching. Why? Because if he didn't do it like that, Israel was going to rebel against Joshua. You understand? Read. And thou shalt put some of thine honor upon him, that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient that listen that's the same thing we read in the book of second kings it says you shall put some of thine honor upon him that all the congregation of the children of israel may be obedient meaning the spirit of moses said listen pour some of your spirit in joshua so that guess what so the congregation will be able to respect this man this is letting you know because remember what moses did give me the book of deuteronomy chapter one Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 9. Watch this. You see, Moses was not Deuteronomy. The spirit that was, was on our forefather Moses, it was no joke. Watch this. Deuteronomy 1, verse 9. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 9. Come on. And I, and I speak unto you at the time, saying, I am not able to pay you myself alone. So he says, Lord, now he's going to, hold on, now he's going to set up structure as per Jethro, okay? Because the Lord approved that thing. Go ahead. The Lord your God had multiplied you, and behold, ye are this day as the stars of heaven for multitude. Now there's millions and millions of, of us now. Go ahead. The Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times so many more as ye are, and mm. blessed you as he had promised you. Now is millions, is, you understand? Read on, watch this. How can I myself alone bear you, bear your cumbrance and your burden and your strife? Read. Take you wise men and understanding and known among your tribes and I will make them rulers over you. You see what he's saying? And I will make them rulers over you. So those 70 elders that the Lord set up, you understand? Guess what? Moses' spirit had to be poured on them as well. Just like it was poured on Joshua, you understand? When Joshua had to go now, the Joshua's conquest. Before that, those 70 elders in the wilderness and under them, there was ranking structures under them. Moses had to pour his spirit on them so they can pour their spirit on the rest. So now, you mean to tell me like the spirit back then, the way the Lord did things, the Lord changed? No, the Lord did not change. The Lord is still doing the same thing today. Because, you see, duckies, they hate law and order and structure. Because you don't like the fact that there's laws of God are coming out and you are forced, you are, you are command, you must keep the commandments. If you don't, buy, 
Guess what? Men, brothers, they're going to be rebellious. They don't like order strike. They don't like to be told what to do. You're going to leave and say, I'm going to go and do my own thing. When you read the history, the Lord never rewarded that type of behavior. Negroes got put to death for that thing. Why? Because they despise government. So as you are coming up, you need to look at how our forefathers moved and pattern yourself after them. You understand? And those fathers are back today. Understand that. Watch this. Now, give me, give me the book of 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 14. Second Kings chapter 5, verse 14. Watch this. Second book of Kings chapter 5, verse 14. Now, at this point, Elijah, Elijah is gone. Elisha is the prophet. Elisha also, he has a servant, just like he was a servant to Elijah. Now Elisha has a servant now. Watch this. Read that, verse 14. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. You see what happens when you wash your behind? Your flesh is going to be like the, the flesh of a little child. Your skin is going to start to open up. Your paws, you're going to look like a baby. Okay, go ahead. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and came and stood before him. And he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth, but in Israel. Now, Come therefore, on. I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. So now Naaman, he was, he had leprosy. He had that unclean leprosy. You understand? The one you read about in Leviticus, uh, I think it's Leviticus 15, not Leviticus 15. Let me see, let me see. Give me one second. It is in Leviticus. Yes, Leviticus 13. When you read Leviticus, the 13th chapter and the 14th chapter, it goes into uh, leprosy, different kinds of leprosy. So the one that um, Nehemiah had was that sporty one, the unclean one, okay? Not the clean leper like Esau. Esau is a clean leper, you understand? His leprosy is clean. But the one that has like dots, like all of that, and that's the unclean one, okay? Um, so he was healed of this leprosy. That's why he was commanded by Elisha, say, listen, go and bathe yourself in Jordan for seven times, and then this leprosy is going to go. You're going to be cleansed. Now watch this. Now, after that was done, Nehemiah, he wants to do what? He wanted to give Elijah, he wanted to give Elisha a reward for the work that he performed in the spirit of Christ. Now watch this. El Elisha refused that. But watch what happens to this Elisha servant. Read verse 20. The book of Second Kings, chapter 5, verse 20. Hold on. Did we read 17? Read 17. The book of Second Kings, chapter 5, verse 17. Mm -hmm. And Naaman said, Shall there not then, I pray thee, be given to thy servant two mules, burden of earth? For thy servant will henceforth offer neither burnt offering nor sacrifice unto other gods, but unto the Lord. Read. In this thing, the Lord pardoned thy servant, that when my master goeth into the house of Rimon to worship there, and he leaneth on my hand, and I bow myself in the house of Rimon, when I bow down myself in the house of Rimon, the Lord pardoned thy servant in this thing. Now watch this. Now read verse 20. Verse 20, but, but Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Behold, my master has spread now, my master had spread Naman, the Syrian. He spared, he spared, he spared Naman, this, this, this Syrian. Go ahead. My master had spared Naman, this Syrian, in not receiving at his hand that which he brought, that which he brought. But as the Lord liveth, I will run after him 
and take somewhat of him. You see what he's saying? Elisha refused. He said, no, I don't want nothing. But Gehazi, you had the spirit of covetousness. He was covetous. You understand? He was covetous. So now he's running after Nehemiah so he can receive. He can receive a reward. Watch this. Verse 21. So Gehazi followed after Naaman, and when Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down from the chariot to meet him and said, Is all well? Mm -hmm. And he said, All is well, my master. All is well. My master had sent me, saying, Stop right Behold. there. Hold on. And he said, All is well. My master has sent me. You see what he's doing? He's using Elisha's name in vain now. He's dropping names, this wicked nigra. So he's saying, my master has sent me. Elisha didn't send him. Now he's lying on his master now. So look at, look at, the, the, look at Elisha. I mean, look at Elijah. Then you look at Elisha. Look at the third generation. <coughs> Just wicked as hell. Elisha didn't do that when he was with Elijah, but Gehazi is doing it. So it's letting you know that each generation becomes weaker and weaker. That's what this is showing you. Give me that in 2nd Esther, chapter 5, verse 54. Because Esther, the angel explained this to Esther. Okay, 2nd Esther 5, verse 54. Read that. Five is fifty-four. Second Ezra five is fifty-four. Second book of Ezra, chapter five is fifty-four. Go ahead. Consider thou therefore also how that ye are less of stature than those that were before you. You see what he's saying? Ye are less of stature than those that be were before you. Meaning, you compared to the generation previously before you, listen, you are less of stature. That's an insult right there. Next verse. Come on. And so are they that come after you less than ye. You see what he's saying? They... And so are they that come after you, Ezra. They are going to be less in stature than you are. Read. Really? As the creatures which now begin to be old and have passed over the strength of youth. Because we're getting weaker and weaker each generation. That's what you are seeing with Elijah, Elisha, and Gehazi. Same thing. You understand? Okay. Now, um, go back to 2 Kings chapter 5. 2 Kings chapter 5 and verse 22. Second book of Kings chapter 5 verse 22. Mm -hmm. And he said, All is well. My master had sent me, saying, Behold, even now, there become to me from Mount Ephraim two young men of the sons of the prophets. Mm. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two changes of garments. Now he's lying. He's saying, listen, I'm asking for these things. My master has sent me because there's two, two, two young men of the sons of the prophets that are coming from Mount Ephraim. He says, what I pray thee, a talent of silver and two changes of garments. So now he's lying. You understand? Go ahead. And Naman said, be content, take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of garments and laid them upon, of, and laid them upon two of his servants and they bear them before him. So now, you see, Nehemiah, Nehemiah is saying, be content, take two talents. Okay? He says, a talent of silver and two changes of, of garments. Nehemiah said, no, no, be content, take two talents instead. Don't take one. Go ahead. And when he came to the tower, he took them from their hand and bestowed them in the house. And he let the men go and they departed. So those men, they were gone now. Now he's got the goods now, okay? He's got those goods because he was 
He had the spirit of covetousness while he was walking with Elisha. Read. But he went in and stood before his master. And Elisha said unto him, Whence comest thou, Gehazi? And he said, Thy servant went no whither. So he's lying. Thy servant went no whither, meaning I didn't go nowhere. I was, I was here. So he doesn't, because I mean, imagine the miracles that Elisha was performing. It is it, it, not, it's not, it had not entered into his mind what Elisha, that the spirit of the Lord is on Elisha. It didn't enter into his mind. But watch the next verse. Go ahead. And he said unto him, When went not my heart with thee? When the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee. You see what he's asking? He says, did not your spirit go with you, Gehazi? Your, my spirit went with you. So somehow this script, this, this, this history, we keep reading it over and over, right? But it's not sinking in the, in the mind of some of the men, some of, the, some of these young men. It's not sinking. You, you wonder why you do, some, you do some evil stuff, right? And then I'll be talking to you and I can figure out, I can find out by just by asking you questions, the stuff will pop out. How did that happen? <laughs> well, how did that happen? Because you don't believe the scripts. Because you think this is just words on a paper. No, this book is alive. Okay, read that again. Second book of Kings. Chapter 5, verse 26. And he said unto him, When not mine heart with thee, when the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee, is it a time to receive money and to receive garments and oliviards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and men servant and maid servants? Is it time now to receive all these rewards right now? It's not the time yet. Because the problem with Gehazi was what? He was covetous. You understand? So you cannot have that spirit of covetousness when you, are, you, when you, you want to be a leader in Israel. You cannot. Because look what Judas did. 30 pieces of silver, he betrayed Christ. You understand? For two talents of silver and two changes of garments, Gehazi betrayed his master. Now read verse 27. Verse 27. The leprosy, therefore, of Naaman shall cleave unto thee, unto thy mm. seed forever. Yo, yo. Come on. And he, went, and he went out from his presence a leper as white as snow. You see what? <laughs> he, he really just, he, was, he, he just went out of his way to just seek for trouble. He went out of his way to seek for trouble. So this whole time, He's walking, he's a leper, white as snow. And everybody knew why that happened, because of his covetous spirit. You understand? So loyalty is important. Gehazi was disloyal. Look what happened to him because of disloyalty. So we cannot move like that, brothers. You must have the spirit of loyalty because when you look at the history, look at our forefathers, they were loyal. And the Lord rewarded them for their loyalty and their faithfulness in this, in this truth. So as, as a young, up, young men that are being groomed to become leaders in Israel, your job is to make sure that you embody these characteristics because it's pertinent in this truth. That's how you build yourself up. Before you can go and lead anybody else, you must lead yourself. These are the characteristics you must embody. Loyalty is good. You must have the spirit of loyalty. Understand that thing, okay? Now, I'm going to do a 360. Go to, um, go to the book of Sirach 44. Because as, as you want to, you aspiring to become leaders in this truth, you, your, your mindset must be about what? You must be progressive. You know what? Hmm, drop that. Give me the book of Nehemiah. Okay, give me Nehemiah. Give me Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 16. Okay, Nehemiah 2, 16. Let's read that. Uh, this right here is one of my favorite forefathers, Nehemiah. Nehemiah was progressive and productive. And there's a brother up in here. He's got that spirit. 
All praise to the Most High. Give me Nehemiah 2.16. Very productive brother. Okay, read that. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 2, verse 16. Go ahead. And the rulers knew not whither I went or what I did. Neither had I Neither had I as yet told it to the Jews, Ray? nor to the priests, nor to the nor to the nobles, nor to the rulers, nor to the rest that did the work. So now Nehemiah, he was making sure that the, he was he. What was he doing? Give me that in. Um, give me give me Zephaniah two verse one. This is what Nehemiah was doing before he could make any moves. He was doing this right here. That means near forefather Nehemiah, he had the spirit of patience and timing yet patience and timing okay zephaniah 2 verse 1 watch this the book of zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1 mm -hmm. gather yourselves together yea gather together O nation not desired O nation he says gather yourself together so what nehemiah was doing he was waiting for the jews to gather themselves together because we needed to rebuild the walls of jerusalem you understand we needed to do that thing. So Nehemiah may, wanted to make sure that he gathered the men together and he's going to what? He had a plan. We're going to gather together and we are going to divide ourselves in groups. And this group will be responsible for this. That group will be responsible for that. And we are going to build, we're going to be progressive and productive. Go back to Nehemiah 2.16. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 2, verse 16. And the rulers knew not whither I went or what I did. Neither had I, neither had I as yet told it to the Jews, nor mm -hmm. to the priests, nor to the nobles, nor to the rulers, nor to the rest that did the work. He says, he didn't tell them yet. Watch this. Go ahead. Then said I unto them, ye see the distress, the distress that we are in. Mm. How Jerusalem lieth waste, Ray? and the gates thereof are burnt with fire. Come and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more a reproach. You see, Nehemiah was productive and progressive. He was not about being uh, about stagnation. No, no, no. He was about progress. He was about growth and development. You see, you see, he's telling this, says, you see the distress that we are in. How many times have I been told you, brothers, listen, we are in, we are at war. The nation of Israel, we are in the state, we, we are in the state of emergency. You understand? We must restore the decayed state of our people. Give me that in First Maccabees, okay? Give me that in First Maccabees 3. We must restore the decayed state of our people. First Maccabees 3, verse 43, I believe. Read that. First book of Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 43. Verse 43. Come on. They said one to another, let us restore the decayed estate of our people. Mm. And let, let us fight for, for our people and the sanctuary. You see that thing? We must, that's what we are doing right now, restoring the decayed estate of our people. And we must fight for our people and the sanctuary, meaning what? The gospel of Christ, the temple. Go ahead, because we must go back and claim our land that rightfully belonged to us. Next verse. Go ahead. Then was the congregation gathered together mm. that they might be ready for battle. Read. That they might pray and ask mm. mercy and compassion. You see that thing right there? That's the spirit that Nehemiah had. That's the same spirit this day. The same spirit that Judah Maccabee and his brothers had. That's the same thing today. Go back to Nehemiah 2 verse 17 again. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 2, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Then said I unto them, Ye see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lieth waste, and the gatherers gather thereof are no, the with gates. fire. And oh. the gates. Come on. And the, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come and let us build up the walls of Jerusalem, that we be no more a reproach. That we be no more a reproach. Go ahead, watch this, verse 18. Then I told them 
of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, as also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. And they said, let us rise up and build so, and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. You see that thing? So he said, for, so they strengthened their hands for this good work. Watch this. Nehemiah chapter 4. Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse... Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 11. Read that. You know what's that of verse 6? Na- Nehemiah 4, 4 verse 6. The book of Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 6. Mm-hmm. So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof. For the people had a mind to work. The people had a mind to work. They didn't make excuses. The people had a mind to work. Right now, we are rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. That's what we are doing right now. Rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. We are fortifying the city. How? We are keeping, we are offering up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. That's what we are doing right now. Go ahead. But it came to pass that when Sanbalad and Tobiah and the and the Arabians, 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 the Arabians, Arabians, these are our enemies right now. Go ahead. And the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up, that they that the breaches began to be stopped. Then they were very wrought. You see, these nations, the Arabians, the Ashdodites. Who's the Ashdodites? Watch this. Let's, let's bring it to today. Give me that in Zechariah. Give me Zechariah 9, verse 6. Zechariah 9, verse 6. It says, and the Ashdodites. Who are these Ashdodites? Read that. Zechariah 9, verse 6. The book of Zechariah. Chapter 9. Verse 6. Verse 6. Come on. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. Mm. And, I, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. The Philistines is the Palestinians. So it says, and a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. Who's the bastards that are dwelling in Ashdod? That's Amalek. Amalek today in our land, calling themselves Jewish. That's the Ashdodites. Amalek. The people that stole our identity. You understand? So today, they are still wroth. The Palestinians, they are still wroth today because we are rising up. Israel is on the rise. They are mad as hell. Understand that. You understand? Go back to Nehemiah 4. Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 8. The book of Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 8. And conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. You see that thing? Because that's what the nations are trying to do. And guess what? Wicked duckies, they're also trying to do that thing. Jump down to verse 11. Verse 11. And our adversaries said, they shall not know, neither see, till we come in the midst among them and slay them and cause the work to cease. Because the people want the work to cease. They want us to stop doing the work. We are not going to stop doing the work. Come hell or high water, we're not going to stop. Go ahead. And came to pass that when the Jews which dwell by them, which dwell by them came, they said unto us, they said unto us ten times, from all places whence ye shall return unto us, they will be upon you. So now they are trying to scare our forefathers. They are trying to scare Nehemiah from stopping to do the work. Read on. Jump down to verse, verse, read verse 13 and 14 together. Therefore, set I in the lower places behind the wall and mm. on the higher places. I even set the people af- I even set the people after their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. So Nehemiah was ready for war. Nehemiah was ready for war. While he was building, he was making sure that the people also, they are ready for war. That's what he was doing. That's the same thing we're doing this day. 
as we are building the people, why do you think when we're at camp, we stand like that? That's, the, that's what we're reading here. While the brothers, the brother be teaching, another one be reading, other brothers, they are sitting, creating a wall, just like Nehemiah was doing. Heavy stuff. Go ahead. And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, be not ye afraid of them. What Remember, did he say? Be ye not afraid of them. Be ye not afraid of them. Don't be afraid of these heathens. Go ahead, and our people that want to hinder this truth. Read. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible. And remember the Lord. You. Hold on. It says, remember the Lord, which is great and terrible. Great and terrible. That's the God we serve. He is a God of war. Read. And fight for your brethren, your sons mm. and your mm -hmm. daughters your wives and your houses you see nehemiah was about nation building he is he was about the nation he wasn't just about himself because he asked for leave and he took that leave he said you know what i'm gonna use this leave that i've been given to go and build jerusalem that's the same thing that zerubbabel did with the king of persia he did the same thing with darius nehemiah is doing the same thing here our forefathers were about the nation you understand? They were not about self. They were not selfish. Okay, Nehemiah chapter 11. Nehemiah 11 verse 1. The book of Nehemiah chapter 11 verse 1. Mm -hmm. And the rulers of the people dwelt at Jerusalem. The rest of the people also cast lots to bring one to bring one of ten to dwell in Jerusalem, the holy city, and nine parts to dwell in other cities. So he already had a plan, you understand, of what's going to happen when the wall is going to be, when the, when, the, when the city, the walls of the city are fortified, who's going to stay where? Because it was a lot of us. Go ahead. And the, the people blessed all the men that willingly offered themselves to dwell at Jerusalem. So those that willingly offered to dwell in Jerusalem, the people blessed them with goods, you understand, with arms and so forth. Read. Now, these are the chief of the provinces. These are the chief of the province that dwell in Jerusalem. But in the cities of Judah dwelt everyone in his possession in their cities. To wit, Israel, the priests and the Levites and the native, Nathanims and the Nathanims and the, the children of Solomon's servants. So what Nehemiah did was he was setting the people in order after now the wall is built up. Those that are going back to Jerusalem, they are going to what? There's a plan already in place. When they get there, everything is already set up for them. So he was about organizing the nation, just like Josiah did when he took over. You understand? Our forefathers were about that thing. They were about building. They were about progress. They were not about stagnation and excuses. That's why in the camp, I, I'm not satisfied. Why? Because there's a lot of work we still need to do. You understand? There's a lot of work we still need to do. That's why now we need to move in a specific way now. You understand? We need to, we need to be productive in terms of the amount of content we push out. You understand? So I'm going to have a, like a short meeting after this class. You understand? 15-minute catch-up. Okay, I'm going to end that last right here. All praise to the most High God. Okay, all praise to the Lord this day. Let's break bread. All right, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23. Let's read that. First book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break, and he break it and said, "Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do ye in remembrance of me." After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, "This cup is the new testament in in my blood. This do ye as often as it drink it in the in remembrance of me, for as often." 
for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 